For today's story, we are discussing a petition from the Church of Scientology that's asking the U.S. Supreme Court to force Danny Masterson to have his uh, sexual assault accusers uh, have their case heard in a binding religious arbitration, posing all the kind of interesting keywords. So let's get started with this story. The Church of Scientology is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to hear a case that asks whether religious groups can force their followers and even ex-followers to submit to internal arbitration proceedings that would settle the disputes. The case is connected to and indeed names Daniel Masterton, who was a actor on That 70s Show, who faces an upcoming uh, sexual assault trial that's currently trying to be held in the California state system. The respondents in the case allege that Masterson, who's described in church legal filings as a church parishioner of the Church of Scientology, uh, assaulted them between 2000 and 2003. The case that is currently at issue doesn't actually involve the assault itself, but rather who can hear the case, namely whether church officials improperly handled the reporting of the alleged assaults. So one of the things we want to do is we'd like to... um, We'd like to sue the Church of Scientology for improperly handling complaints we had regarding the uh, alleged assaults by one of its members against another one of its members, and the church didn't properly investigate and so forth and so on. Okay, so intermediate appellate court in California had ruled that the respondents enjoyed a First Amendment right to leave the Church of Scientology and that any mandatory arbitration agreement with the church therefore terminated as a result of the departure. So basically what's happened here is that when they became members of the church, they signed an arbitration agreement that said any disputes they had would be resolved in arbitration, in a religious arbitration nonetheless. And they've since left the church. So the question, one of the questions might be, is the religious arbitration agreement still valid despite the fact they left the church? Okay. So the intermediate appellate court said uh, they have a right to leave the church and therefore the arbitration agreement terminates with them. That ruling flatly described Masterton's allegations as uh, the purient kind of assault that we don't like. Quote, petitioners in the writ proceeding are former members of the Church of Scientology who had reported to the police that another church member had uh, forcibly sexually assaulted them. They allege that in retaliation for the reports, the church encouraged its members to engage in a vicious campaign of harassment. The Church of Scientology campaigns of harassment for things it doesn't like? No. After petitioners brought suit in the Superior Court against the church and related entities and persons, some of those defendants moved to compel arbitration, relying on agreements that provide that all disputes with the church would be resolved according to the church's own ethics, justice, and binding religious arbitration agreement. Sounds totally neutral. I'm sure you get a fair shake. That system was created to decide matters in accordance with Scientology's principles of justice and fairness, which those principles are probably a lot like the Church of Scientology wins. One key point of the California Court of Appeals ruling was that petitioner's case involved conduct that allegedly occurred after they left the church. Quote, individuals have a First Amendment right to leave a religion. I mean, that much is true, sure. We hold that once petitioners had terminated their affiliation with the church, they were not bound to resolve disputes to resolve their claims at issue, which are based on alleged tortious conduct occurring after separation from the church and do not implicitly resolve, include a resolution on ecclesiastical issues. So maybe one of the issues is, did they leave the church? Can they leave the church? How do we decide if they left the church? All kinds of fun religious questions when it comes to the Church of Scientology. The court says we issued a writ directing the trial court to vacate the order compelling arbitration. So the trial court said, how about arbitration? The appellate court said, how about not arbitration? The court of appeals opinion is officially unpublished for whatever reason, because of whatever. The California Supreme Court has refused to take the case for whatever its reason is. So therefore, the appellate decision is the highest authority decision, and we've appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court. The church asked the U.S. Supreme Court to pluck the matter from California's court system and proffers these two questions uh, that they'd like the U.S. Supreme Court to apparently answer. When a parishioner freely executes a religious arbitration agreement with the church, does the First Amendment prohibit enforcement of the agreement if the parishioner leaves the faith? So can the religious arbitration agreement bind you forever? 
Does the First Amendment restrict terms on which a church may accept members into its faith? There's an exciting one. Does the First Amendment prohibit restrict terms on which you can accept in the faith? Well, as to the religion, maybe. As to the law, eh. At times, co-opting language from the Courts of Appeal decision, the church asserts in its petition to the U.S. Supreme Court that its followers consented to an irrevocable agreement to submit disputes to churches' arbitration, which is just one of the prices of joining the Scientology religion. They literally refer to agreeing to the arbitration as a price of joining the Scientology religion. The church's practice of resolving disputes with its members is described in the petition as a religious arbitration. The petition chides the California court system for, in Scientology's view, forcing it to change the way it admits and deals with its own congregants. Well, in terms of your religious discipline, uh, you know, if you want to expel them from the church, go nuts. But when you want to interfere in the real world, there are, there are rules for that. The church argues that First Amendment bans the state and courts from governing church dispute resolution procedures. As to matters of your ecclesiastical faith, you are 100% correct. It absolutely does. So if you're trying to, like, not have them be members of the church or you want to make them say five Hail Marys, not that they have to. But, you know, if you want to do that kind of thing, sure. But this isn't that. Religious arbitration is a long recognized institution that's increasing its use throughout the United States and across religions. Review by this court is necessary to so solve the confusion raised by the California Court of Appeals. Religious organizations need this court to remove any doubt that their contracts, including agreements to arbitrate disputes before a religious forum, cannot be voided by a party's professed change of mind or professed change of religion, one will take note. Churches have the right to know that their contracts are equal under law and not subject to ad hoc and unprecedented application of state action theory by judicial officers. Exciting. The Church of Scientology writes the following. Contracts are contracts, even where a church is a party. It should go without saying that contracts with churches are entitled to the same protection under law as contracts with secular entities, like you can never leave. The California Court of Appeals disagrees. It held that voluntary party to an otherwise enforceable contract with the church may annul that contract by asserting a First Amendment right to leave the faith and extricate themselves from the church. While secular entities can force contracts over the objection of a party that no longer wishes to be bound, churches now cannot, as long as a party asserts a change of faith. The Court of Appeal deprived churches of the contractual right that really matters, the right to enforce, and it did so expressly because churches are religious. The dispute here is simple. The respondents, as a condition for joining the Church of Scientology, repeatedly and expressly agreed to religious arbitration of any disputes between them and the Church of Scientology, regardless of when those disputes arose. So if you join the Church, join the church of Scientology, they want control of any disputes arising from them forever. The agreement to submit to disputes to religious arbitration is not anomalous. American courts have long recognized the right of religious institutions to use dispute resolution procedures derived from and guided by their foundational beliefs and scriptures. Such beliefs may be including such things as Scientology can never lose. Secular courts have placed agreements to submit disputes to religious arbitration on an equal footing with agreements calling for secular arbitration and declined invitations to discriminate against religious arbitration just because it's religious. At some point, respondents have changed their mind and their faith. They argue their change of faith should free them from their contractual obligations to be forever indebted to the Church of Scientology in all of its ways, including by submitting their disputes with petitioners to their chosen religion forum. The California Court of Appeals agrees. It became the first court in the nation to overturn a freely executed religious arbitration agreement based on objections by a party that selected forum was exactly what they agreed to. Religious. Forever. The court of appeals arrived at this result by finding state action in judicial enforcement of religious arbitration agreements while acknowledging the enforcement of secular arbitration does not amount to state actions. A response to the church's petition is currently due on October uh, on the 22nd. Master Sin, of course, is meanwhile scheduled to face a separate criminal trial in California this October and has previously denied its allegations. Thus, that brings us to the end of the story of the Church of Scientology, which it appears uh, might have some control issues. It apparently likes the control. This is this is novel, new information we had no idea about. The Church of Scientology really is uh, controlling and possessive. This is this is a shock to all of us, I'm sure. Apparently, this level of control uh, it desires to extend forever. 
in order to join the Church of Scientology, you have to agree that any disputes you have with the church will be resolved by a religious arbitration process, which I'm sure will be completely equitable to all the parties concerned. Uh-huh. And uh, it seems that these people don't really want to do that anymore. They, they don't like the Church of Scientology very much. Uh, but the uh, they they would the Church of Scientology would like to continue binding them forever in the forever contract. So they've asked the U.S. Supreme Court for review. I don't know what the U.S. Supreme Court will do. I suppose we'll find out. But at least for a moment, that brings us to the end of the discussion of this case.